Hi! I wish you a good day! Did you ever think to yourself, what's the best melee in the entirety of Half-Life, including Gmod, and excluding the workshop? Well, I did. This is more or less a continuation of my previous video, where I talked about the melees from Half-Life 2 Deathmatch and Gmod. That being, which is better, the crowbar stun stick in Half-Life 2 Deathmatch? If you've been on the internet in the past ever, you'll know what the tier list chart is. And well, this video is going to be just that. A tier list of all the melees from Half-Life 1 and its spin-offs, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, Half-Life 2 Beta, and Gmod. But Gmod isn't Half-Life, I hear you say. First, this is my video. Second, people actually play Gmod because it is repetitive you get my drift anyway so that's one way to make the information in this video useful i'm going to be doing a deep dive on each melee that being its stats which i want to read out i don't want to bore you to death the way you get it its usability and other stuff about the melee and just to be clear everything here is my opinion that's built off of the hard difficulty in each game but before we begin join my discord server lots of customization for free okay Let's start the tier list with the most boring game of the list. <clears throat> Half-Life. Right after the big light poop explodes, you find a crowbar, conveniently left by somebody escaping. Or oh, the crowbar just fell down from one of these pipes. You do a reasonably low damage of the crowbar, but you swing it very fast, making it a valid way of killing pretty much only headcrabs due to their low HP, and the fact any other enemy has a melee attack. Wow. Other popular uses for the bar crow is breaking boxes slash crates and to splatter dead bodies. There's also a HD model for it, which looks chunky. Here are the other crowbars for comparison. There also exists a second crowbar pickup in Blast Pit, which you can't pick up since you've already got a crowbar. There's actually a way to avoid the first crow crow to pick up the second one, but it is so stupid that I'm going to link Purple Colonel's video on it. Half of one crowbar. Seat ya! Uh, as it appears, in Half-Life Deathmatch, the crowbar deals 25 damage instead of the 5, making the Half-Life Deathmatch crowbar the, the, the best DPS in the entire list. What? Eight here. Oh. Moving off to the next title, or rather, spin-off, Half-Life Opposing Force, a game where you play as a German Shepherd. <laughs> Unlike the normal game, Opposing Force has over two melee weapons, starting off with the pipe wrench. You find it next to a toolbox before a puzzle that requires you to break shit. Good game design. The wrench is a lot slower, but it does a lot more damage than the bar bar. But that's for the left click, because there's a right click attack. The charge attack. I think that how the charge attack works is self explanatory. It does enough damage to obliterate a headcrab or better, a fucking black op soldier. Stat wise, the wrench is better than the next melee. Got nothing else to say here. Beat her. The other opposing force melee is the military knife. You find it on a cliff stabbed into a vertigaunt, with its most likely Leona down there on the bottom of the pit. Which, for some reason, he has some ammo next to him. I wonder, what's the lore behind this knife? I imagine this unfortunate son successfully jumped out of the Osprey with her she crashed, only for the vertigaunt to teleport in front of him. The dude, missing his gun, stabbed the vertigaunt to death, and the gym victorious only for the piece of catwalk to collapse underneath him. Man, I love world building. The knife itself is just a better version of the crowbar. Sure, it may have shorter range, unsure if such statistic even exists, but it still somehow deals 5 damage more than the crowbar. Honestly, I'd pick the knife over the wrench any day, any time, even though the DPS doesn't match up at all. See ya. It's a knife, it's cool as fuck. With the magical god powers of the console, you can get the crowbar too in Opposing Force. It's nothing different from the original game though, even in its usability. This also applies to blue shit, but there you get the crowbar at the start of the game. No need for canvas. Since this bar crow is the same as in normal Half-Life, I won't be ranking it. The hands are different though. To at least save this part from being short, I can say that a blue shit remake in Black Mesa makes the crowbar a lot slower, which makes a whole lot of sense, since you're practically a mall cop with no HUV suit on. You just don't have the same strength. 
really bad. Another thing is that the crowbar you get in this game is likely the most lore heavy melee from the entire series. You see, the crowbar you get in Half-Life 2 is most likely not the crowbar that Golden used, since it gets stripped from you by the G-Man and placed god knows where. Chiman knows where. But Barney at the end of Blue Shift doesn't have his weapon stripped away. So is Barney, a dirty fourth wall breaking liar by saying you dropped this back in Black Mesa. Or did some weird timeline breaking paradox happen where the crowbar you get in Blue Shift is the same as in regular Half-Life? Could, could Barney be a bigger entity than the G-Man? Is Barney secretly a god? Dog. <laughs> Leaving Goldsters alone, we'll enter the sequel. Half-Life 2. Yay! This game features a single melee weapon and two NPC only weapons. But we'll get into that later. First off, the crowbar. You get it this time from Barney. Most of the users crowbar has in this game is breaking boxes slash crates and planks. But honestly, the shotgun is better at that. The shotgun just breaks shit and less hits. Um killing something with the crowbar. Takes like ages in hard mode. Only head crabs are fed to be killed with the crowbar, and that's including the poison ones too. Because for the love of God, it will not hit the fast one with it. But to be real with you, even the cinder block does a better job at killing crab heads than the crowbar. C tier. <laughs> the stun stick in Half Life 2 doesn't exist as a player weapon, and only gives you suit energy if picked up. So I won't be ranking it. <laughs> Sorry, bro. The other NPC only weapon is the Mad Pipe. Used by Matt in the root canal chapter to fend off the manhex with the help of Gorgon. But I lied! Or rather, Matt lied. Or even better, Valve lied to us. Matt Pipe is actually the Matt Pipe prop plastered onto the crowbar. Fucking bullshit. I think it's only fair if I drank the Matt Pipe, since it is actually a weapon you you technically use. C tier. Also, I know the Matt Pipe has its own melee in Synergy, but Synergy isn't on the list, so let's move on. Half Wave to Deathmatch. A game surprisingly well documented on my channel, in my own rights that is. Like previously glazed, I have an entire video about the two minutes from Half-Life to Deathmatch. Um, that video is missing a conclusion, but I haven't seen anyone brag about that. This game features the bar crowbar and the stun stick, but this time in a player friendly way. Long story short, at a long story, sh long story short, ATA for both of them ranked by how good it's on players. The stun sticks, the slow hard hitter and the crowbars everything. Go check out my video for more info. Actually one thing I forgot to mention in the video is the fact the stun stick makes sparks when equipped. Wow. Gary Smart has been already talked about in the previous video, but I'll do a refreshed recap. The crowbar is unchanged from Half-Life 2, but since Gmod's locked at the lower difficulty than hard, then well it kills more things in less hits. Never mind the difficulty change, it's a B tier. The same can be said about this one. The stun stick. In Gmod, instead of suit energy, you pick up the stun stick weapon. Which is ass! It uses the same damage as the crowbar, making it a slower version of the crowbar. Forget about the slow hard hitter description. It's now a slow light hitter, if anything. How could you fuck up this melee, Gary? Just get out of this shit, yeah! Get out of my fucking side! And never fucking come back! The other <laughs> great melee when compared to anything else in Gmod is the fists. They deal randomized damage, which can go from 8 to 15 damage. That's lower than the crowbar and the stun stick. Its swing time is also very slow, similar to stun stick. But as a saving grace, every third successful hit in a row on something that has HP, they do a heavy attack, with the animation being an uppercut shot instead of a normal punch. Deals from 13 damage to around 24 damage. Still lower than both of the other melees. Although, you can pick which arm you want to use when attacking by clicking your mouse respectfully. That's cool. D tier, anyway. Now, for the part that everybody was waiting for The Half Life 2 Beta. Holy, I don't know. Starting off with the boring and repetitive, the crowbar. I mean. Yeah, the only difference being in this version of the crowbar row 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 is the animation are just wrong. Overall, since the half life to beta mega boot has these shitty half of fun blood particles and the uh, crack has bad lighting, making it just, just fucking suck. Yeah. 
Shit is personal. On to the next unfinished <laughs> beta piece of shit. Similarly to Gmat, in the beta, when you pick up a stun stick, you get a stun button. It is surprisingly faster than any other stun stick from this video, but slower than the crowbars. And the equip time is longer due to this existing for whatever reason, with the cost of damage being the same of the crowbar and the equip time being longer. Yee. I could just say SHIT yeah right about now and call it a day, but did you know that the old stun stick view model is actually more accurate to the overall stun stick model or the world model than the view model from Half-Life 2 Deathmatch? Look at this. Look at this, I guess, electrical activator thingy, right? It's present in the old view model, but missing in the new view model. The second thing I'd want to bring up is I'm probably not the only person to only know this model as the magneto stick from TTT in Gmod. See it here, only because of its lore. And lastly, probably the coolest melee from the entire video, or list or chat or fuck, the Ice Pick slash Ice Axe. Not a lot is known about this melee. It mainly got cut from the game due to it being a better crowbar, and the place you most likely would have gotten it, the Borealis, was cut too. Or higher hyperborea, whatever. Man. So there's no logical reason for it to be in the game. Anyways, the ice pick is a tad bit faster version of the crowbar. It does the same damage, so it's just better. It also has a secondary slower attack, which uh, deals the same damage as the main attack. On the wiki it says that the secondary attack deals more damage, which I guess so it should, but well, the half have to beat a mega boot doesn't have that fixed or something. Beat ya! The best melee out of the entire beta! Now, the melee everybody anticipated. The socket wrench! What? Okay, so both the fandom and the over wiki state that the socket wrench Alex holds in one of the promo arts for Half-Life 2 is a cut weapon. Um, the only thing close to a socket wrench in Half-Life 2 is Alex having sockets on her belt. And there's also a wrench prop. What the fuck have you been smoking? Anyways, here it is, my full tier list of melees from Half-Life, Half-Life Deathmatch, Half-Life Opposing Force, Half-Life Blue Shift, Half-Life 2 Beta, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, and Gmod. Isn't this beautiful? Wow. During the making of this vid, I had a birthday, so happy birthday to Timothy. Yay. Now, I could say some corny line about how you subscribing or liking this video would mean the world to me, but the truth is right now, I'm seeing a world where you haven't done none of that, so you better change that. Thanks to 404 not found for boosting my Discord server. Anyways, <gasps> thank you for watching.